we'd like to ask Brother Dave if he would be coming to help us. Brother Gary Kidd, I think I saw him over here. If you give us a hand, it's going to be kind of Father, we just thank you today for your blessings, for a privilege and honor to be in the house of God, for a time we could come out, Lord, and just worship you corporately in this place. We pray your blessings today in the house. We pray as we give our gift of offering that you would bless it, Lord, as we build your kingdom. Also bless our gift of praise today, Father. We thank you and we ask you in Christ's name. Let's all stand as we come into worship this morning. Hallelujah.
It, it was a hot island. It was one that everybody was looking for. So I went to Somerset, couldn't find it. I left Somerset. I ended up going to Lexington. And I spent most of the day in Lexington. And I drove all over the place. I went to every store in Lexington. And believe it or not, I could not find the Tickle Me Elmo. I looked and looked and I thought, she just going to have to do about this. You know, this is just not it. And I'm getting a look. That's the same look I got from my wife at the time. And Pam looked at me and she said, you got to find it. This baby wants it. That's all she's obsessed with. It. That's all she's talking about. She wants to tickle me yellow. And I thought, well, all right. And so I left from the, the next morning. I got up and I drove to Knoxville. And I went all through the stores in Knoxville. And finally, at the last store, I went to the shelf and it wasn't there. And the, the little uh, the person that was over she said, listen, I think we have one more of those in the back. And I said, I'll tell you what, I'm going to stand right here and I'm not going to leave. You go get that, you bring it to me. I bought the thing, brought it home and put it under the tree. The next morning, Courtney opened it up and she was so excited that she got the thing out and she tickled it and laughed and jiggled and shake. She was so excited because she got the tickle me elbow and I was so happy as a daddy because I drove to Somerset and I drove to Lexington and I drove to Knoxville and I, I spent hours upon hours and thousands of dollars, maybe ten thousand dollars in gas and all kinds of trouble and all kinds and I got her the gift that she wanted. And six months later, I was upstairs and, and that tickle me elbow was thrown over in the corner and I said, "Come here, baby, let's play with this." And she said, "No, Daddy, I don't want to play with that no more." And my heart. I thought about our Savior. The Bible said, Jesus said, for God so loved the world that he gave us a gift. Amen. And the gift was his only begotten Son. But so often, we might take him at first, and then we put him over in a corner. And he wants to give you the gift of life. Amen. Somebody help us. Say amen. 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 Let me preach to you this morning. Hallelujah. We look at this, and it's probably one of the most famous verses in the whole entire Bible. There's probably, it's probably quoted more if you've been to Sunday school or you've been to uh, 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 vacation Bible school or been to a prayer meeting or a Bible study and even people who even don't even go to church, uh, who, who, who don't even frequent the doors, uh, they can quote you John 3.16. You can see it through the end of the goalpost on the football games uh, uh, when you're watching the games on Sunday. Uh, you can see it in the crowds on the basketball games, uh, someone holding it up. Uh, underneath the basketball goal. You can see it on Sun on Saturday if you watch the college football thing. You can see it in the background as, a, as an analyst are sitting around their desk. Someone is holding up John 3, 16. You can see it written across the cheek of a quarterback. You can see it written on a headband of a basketball player. John 3, 16. But even though you can quote it and even though you know where it's found, even though you know it's in the Bible, Bible, even though you know it's written in the book of John, but just being able to recite it, or just being able to memorize it, it's not enough. It's not good enough. It's not enough. You must believe the Word for what the Word says. In John 3, 16, you've got to believe it. Amen. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, you got to believe it. you got to believe it. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world. Now this morning, I want to share with you some interesting points that I want to place out on John 3.16. The first thing I want to share with you today is for God so loved. Let's start on that point. For God so loved. I, I looked up the meaning in Webster, the meaning of love. Love. Love is a deep, intense affection for something or someone. As you read on, it is very difficult to love a thing because a thing can't love you back. Amen. Right? 
we, we, we really abuse that word, love. Bear with me. Come on. We really abuse it. Oh, I love my purse. Oh, I love those shoes. Oh, I love your dress. Ooh, I love your haircut. I love that beard, brother Josh. I love that body you and your boy had on. I mean, you never know. I love, oh, I love your car. Ooh, I love your truck. Are you with me? Yeah. How, many, how many said that stuff? Oh, I, 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 help me here. Ooh, I love that dessert. See, we throw it around. Oh, I preach it now. Ooh, I love your boat. I love that. I love that gear rifle. Oh, I, I love that new bow. Are you with me? We all do it. Amen. We throw that word around until that word becomes cheapened. And that word does not have much meaning. That word is simply a word that we use that we think that we are expressing how we feel about something. Let me tell you something. I've got a I've got an old Corvette sitting in my garage, and, and I don't love it. I like it, but it's a vehicle. I, it's, it's just I, I have come to the place, maybe the maturity in my life, uh, that the things that I love uh, are not just uh, uh, things that sit in garages or, or things that sit in a driveway or something stuck in a corner in a shelf, uh, something that's hidden, uh, uh, laying in a corner kind of the corner of the bed like a tickle in the elbow. The things that I love are the things that count. The things of people that are in my life. Amen. The family that is in my life. The church people, those of you that are here today. But more importantly, my Lord and Savior, Amen. Jesus Christ, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the Alpha and the Omega, my Redeemer, my Healer, my Friend. I know somebody help me. The one that will set you free through we go through life and we throw the word love around. Oh, I love it. Oh, I love it. Leslie, I love those shoes. Where'd you get them? Sketchers out there. They can stay in the sketchers out there because I ain't driving down there to buy no shoes. That's what we say. Right? I had people come up, last week people come up and say, Hey, man, I love the color of your hair. I said, thank you. It's called platinum. <laughs> I had to work hard for that. I looked at a picture just the other day, three years ago, and it wasn't like this. It's some of y'all's fault in this room, sitting on this front seat by her husband. It's probably the main one. <laughs> she fault. You're right. But it's called platinum. They said, what color is that? I said, what? <laughs> I don't know. I've done that for you. And I said, God. Amen. He's like, you didn't do that? And I'm like, no. Oh, I wish I knew what color that was. I like mine like that. I love it. I'm thinking you're crazy. <laughs> There's more important things in life than loving the color of hair. Your hair can be any color you want. I don't care. Knock yourself out. Amen. But see, that's what we do. Our life is built upon the physical things that we love. But the Bible said, for God so loved. For love is of God. Are you with me this morning? Now, everyone who, who, who the Bible said, and everyone who, who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not, he who does not love does not know God. That's, I'm reading, I'm giving you a text this morning in John, 1 John chapter number 4. This, uh, uh, we, uh, we need to understand that the reason why God so loved this world is because God Himself is love. Amen. Now we aren't love. We say we love God. But see, as I preached last week, so often we carry around a judgmental spirit. Yep. Amen. Help me now. Come on. I'm, I'm, I'm working on it. I, I have fight with it too. We carry around judgmental spirit. We know what people's done. 
We know where they've been, and so automatically we want to judge them. Now let me tell you something. It is not my place. I want to love everybody. It doesn't matter where you've been, what you've done. Oh, help the pastor right here. I don't care. I don't care how many times you've been married and divorced. I don't care how many times you've been down the road. I don't care how many mistakes you made. God is a God of love. Amen. And if he can love you, and if he will leave the 99 and go look after you, then who am I? Somebody help the pastor. Who am I? Stay in the Amen. God. God is love. Number two, for God so loved the world. Somebody say the world. The world. Somebody look to and say, I'm the world. I think, see, the second thing it is it, it teaches us that God has an object for his love. He has an object for his love. For God so loved the world, it says. In the text here, it doesn't matter who you are, God loves you. Somebody look across the room right now and say, it don't matter who you are, God loves you. Now you think about that. It don't matter what you look like, God loves you. It don't matter what color your skin is, God loves you. It don't matter what your past is. God loves you. Amen. It don't matter if you're tall or you're short or you're fat or you're thin. I don't mean to be offensive because I'm fat. I said it don't matter. It, it don't matter if you got money or you ain't got money. It don't matter if you got status or you don't have status. It don't matter if you drive a good car or a joker. It don't matter if you even got a car. It don't matter if you dress in the best clothes or if you dress in just what you can find. God loves you. For who you are and where you come from, it don't matter what your last name is, or I feel like preaching. It don't matter what your last name is. It don't matter if your daddy was a drug addict. Your mama was a prostitute. It don't matter if you're a drug addict or if you're a prostitute. God loves you just the same. Amen. Oh, somebody ought to give him a praise. What a gift to give to him. What a gift to give to him. Do you get that? Amen. Yeah. Yeah. It don't matter. Amen. So often we put we put little little stigmas. We put little little. Uh, you got to pass this test in order. But God don't ask you to do that. He loves you. It doesn't matter who you are. Amen. It don't matter how bad you've been. It don't matter how good you've been. It don't matter if you've been in, in jail. It don't matter if you've not been in jail. It don't matter if you've done drugs or if you haven't done drugs. It don't matter if you're an alcoholic or you're not an alcoholic. It don't matter if you've been from a broken home or haven't been from a broken home. God loves you. Amen. Yeah. And not, not a manly, humanly love. Because we, we put stipulations on it. Yes. Right? Come on. I love you if you do this for me. Mm -hmm. He loves you so much that even though you couldn't do anything, you can't. You realize it's like Courtney said, Dad, it's hard to buy anything for you because you know, you've got everything you need. How, how are you going to get God something? Well, he's got it all anyway. Amen. How are you going to try to outgive him? Yes. I'm going to give you enough, God, that you'll love me. You can't. You don't have enough. There's never been enough on this earth, and there never will be enough on this earth to give him, to repay him for the love that he gave his son. There never Amen. will be. You can't borrow enough. You can't buy enough. You can't steal enough to give him back. Only thing he wants you to do is give him love in return. Give him praise. And as Pastor Josh preached on Wednesday night, give him worship back for what he's done for you. Yes. Amen. Amen. I worship the Lord. I praise you, Lord. See, God has an object of His love. For God so loved the world. No matter who you are, no matter what you've done, God loves you. Number three, not only does God love you, the Bible said 
For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. Listen to me. The third thing is I'm saying, what is the sacrifice of God's love? It's His Son. I have one son. I have another that I claim. I say I claim him. I've whipped him about as much as I have my own. I have one son. Sitting right over in that plaid shirt. Good looking boy, big tall fella. That's my boy. My boy. I remember the day he was born. I remember it just like it's yesterday. I was the first to hold him. I was actually the first to hold both of his children. And uh, I was the first to put him in his arms. I remember leaning down in front of the table. And Sister Pam there, and she said, let me see him. And I remember pulling the little blanket back from his face and sticking him right up next to her. And she said, oh, he's so pretty. I said, he is. She said, he looks like your daddy. I said, he does. I see that. I think all babies look alike, but it don't matter. I'm just trying to agree. Good husband's too. Yeah, you're right. And I stuck him down there. It's, he still have it all the way cleaned up. And I remember cleaning him up. And I remember, I remember my first changing his diaper and getting a shower all at the same time. That's what boys do. I remember. Help me now. I remember. I remember. It's a boy. Don't care my name. I remember. I remember coming in the house one day. And he had on a pair of Courtney shoes or play shoes and was pushing around a vacuum cleaner and his mother was just laughing and taking pictures. I said, oh, no, 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 not my boy. <laughs> this won't be a boy. I looked at him and he's like, he was like, you know, he didn't understand. I'm like, no, boy, we, I mean, you're going to push that around, put you on a pair of muck boots, you know, you're going to push that thing around. Won't be a boy. I remember. I remember going out the door, and he's about three, and he was crying because I was going hunting, Brother Gary, and he wanted to go hunting with me, and he was crying. I got outside and got to my truck, and I laid my stuff in the truck, and I turned back around, and I looked at his mama. I said, get me a little bag ready, and I took some diapers and stuck them in my back pocket and wiped and stuck them in the other, and about three-year-old, I was carrying him out in the woods and setting him in a tree stand with me, and he just being a little bitty fella, and he'd fall asleep, but I wanted him to hunt, you know. I, I, I remember taking him to the pond and fishing with him when he's a little fella because he's my boy. And do you think for one second and for one moment that I will give him for any of you? You are sadly mistaken. Not that I don't love you, but that is my boy. But God loved you enough that he took that out of the way. And he looked at his son and he said, there's got to be a lamb. There's got to be a sacrifice. There's got God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. Romans 5 and 8 says it like this, but God demonstrates His love toward us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. For us. While we were yet sinners, Jesus died on the cross and He was buried. But three days later, <laughs> woo! He come out of that grave. Yes. Number four this morning as I'm coming to a close. We're getting ready to come to Number four. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. What is the gift of God's love? I think we've established this morning that God's love, He gave His Son. What did God really give us? Let's think about this. What did God really give us? I'll tell you. He gave you life. Life. 
Life is more than fancy houses. Yesterday evening, I sat down with my father-in-law. Ronald's in his 70s, has little health issues, and I had been, I worked all day at the farm, I loaded hay, I made five, five or six loads of hay. I loaded and put in the barn yesterday, and I come in yesterday, I thought I'm gonna feed the animals, and we'll go give you something to eat, and I pulled in. When I pulled in to feed the stuff that's in my horses in the barn, I, I, I heard him over in his house busting wood. And I thought, and I'm hungry, but I need to go over and help him. So I quickly went in and fed and watered the horses and took care of things and jumped back to the vehicle and drove over there, drove up beside the house and got out of my vehicle and walked behind the house and there he was, busting wood. He's lifting his arm was bleeding where he'd flip a piece of stuff and come back to get him and he bandaged it up. For the next hour, I was over helping him bust wood. We was busting wood, but he started talking to me and he said, let me tell you something, son. He sat down on a piece of firewood while I was picking stuff up. But let me tell you something. He said, man works his whole life trying to get stuff. Trying to get ahead. He said, you do it your whole life. And he said, none of it matters. Amen. He said, just the simple things. You coming over the field and seeing me over here busting wood. Just come over and stop and help me. He said, that, that's what life's about. Amen. He was thinking. He said, just the simple things as having the love of your children and the love of your family. Just the simple things of having a roof over your head. He said, because you can have all the money in the world and you don't have life. And what have you got? Can I tell someone in this room today? You need life. You can't find it in a bottle. There's not a pill that will do it. Amen. You need life. Life is not in relationships. It's not, oh, if I have a new boyfriend or a new girlfriend or if I have a new spouse or if I have, it's not in relationships. Life is in Christ. Yes. Because relationships will fade. Partners will pass away. Parents will die. Cars break down. Houses leak. Foundations get bad. But what you build in Christ will last them this life yes, yes. and will take you to the next life. Amen. 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 Listen to me. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. The latter part of that topic around verse 19 the Word says that when men come to the light, the light reveals. But when you love God, you want to go to the light. I'm, I'm paraphrasing. You don't want to run from it. You want to run to it. I think it's time that we, the church, now help me preach here for, for two more minutes. See, we, the church, we have become so much about popularity contests. We've become so much about who's got the biggest attendance or who's got the biggest building or who's got... Let me tell you what I want to be. I want to be a part of the church that's about changing lives. I want to be a part of the church that's causing the world to be free. I want to be a part of the church that has a no judgment. As Sister Allison says, we don't judge you. We just want you to come. But we want you to give Christ your life. And we want to see you turn your home around. And we want to see you get a gift that not just keeps giving. Day after day. Every day after day. Not just on December the 25th. But every day he keeps giving. Amen. Amen. Yeah. He keeps giving. Because he wants you to live. He wants you to have joy. He wants you to laugh. But he wants you to love him. Would you stand with us this morning? Bye.
your head to me today. I want you to think about somebody by you. Those of you that's watching right now on Facebook and YouTube, I want you to think about what's going on in your house. Listen to me. Do you know Jesus? Ah, you know who he is. You know the name. You know we celebrate Christmas as his birth month. I'm not talking about that. Do you know Jesus? Oh, you know that he was lived in Jerusalem or was raised by Joseph and Mary. You know that he's the Son of God. You know that he was begotten by the Holy Ghost. You know those things. But do you know Jesus? See, I feel in my spirit there's some of you right now that you, you've prayed. You've prayed. And you've asked him to come in your life. I'm talking to I'm talking to a young lady right now. I'm, I'm talking to a young lady. You've asked him to come into your life, but you haven't forgiven yourself. Amen. You're carrying around all the guilt. I'm talking to that young man right now that's broken. You're carrying around that stuff. Jesus said, Come unto me, all you that labor and heavy labor, I'll give you rest. There's no sense in carrying it. That's not life. Leave it. Forget about it. You're here today. You had a broken relationship. You're here today. You had an addiction. You're here today. Whatever the thing is, He wants to give you life. Maybe you've prayed, but you're really not where you need to be. I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand. But I know beyond a shadow of a doubt you're here today. So what I'm going to ask you to do, Jesus said in His Word, John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that He gave, I'm asking you to come today and receive the gift. The gift of forgetfulness. Forget where I've been. The gift of redemption to redeem us from what we used to be. As Brother Bryson sang that song earlier, I don't know how it's been, but it's by His mercy and His grace. So if you're that person, if you're that young lady, you're that young man, that mom, that dad, I want you to take a step from where you're standing. Right now. Come from your seat and come to this hall. Right now. You know you're here. I know you're here. Come right now and say, Lord, forgive me. Lord, I, Lord, I know you've forgiven me, but I've not forgiven myself, so today I'm laying it at this altar, and I'm not taking it back home with me. Right now, come to this altar as they sing. Would you come?
heart of the Lord at her house the other day. So her mom and daddy that she wanted to be baptized. And I tell you, this is one of my greatest joys as a pastor. When you see these babies, and I watched her mother grow up and her daddy grow up. So I am so excited. <laughs> She's excited. Amen. Father, in obedience to your word and upon her profession of faith, we baptize her in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Isn't this beautiful? Yes, yes. This couple's been coming to church and they approached me last week. They said, Pastor, we want to be baptized. So I'm so excited to do this. Father, upon the profession of her faith and in the name of the Father and Son and the Holy Ghost, I baptize my sister. It says, I worship the Lord who formed the mountains. The Lord God Almighty is His name. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Father, in obedience to Your Word and upon the confession of His faith, we baptize our brother in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. 